Hey everybody, it's Hawk here, and today we're talking about the original pointy stick. The spear. So, first episode of Armaments of the Apocalypse, we talked about the brush axe, because I decided, let's start things off with something a little weird. And now I'm deciding, let's go to something exceedingly basic, and that is, of course, the spear. Now this spear, I actually owned for almost two years, and I haven't done a single video on it, because I just keep not doing it, and I don't know why. But it's a rather nice one, if I remember correctly. This is a 12th century spear I got from Cult of Athena. It was cheap, it's nice, I like it. Um, and it's an excellent representation, in my opinion, of what people think of when they hear spear. It's usually something that looks kind of like this. Probably from, you know, Stronghold or Age of Empires to an extent, though Age of Empires tends to use giant two-handed ones, not something like this. But this is kind of what people think, either with or without the small wings on it. So in an apocalyptic standpoint, this would be a very high-quality spear. Which is why I'm going over it. This is an actual designed-as-such spear. This is not a large knife somebody affixed to a handle. Though that would technically still be a spear, it is a improvised one. It is a cobbled-together one. And it, even if it is still highly functional, it won't be the same. And I'd like to go over some of the differences. Now, if I can get it to... Folk. It is focusing. Excellent. Now, as you can see here, this is a fairly thick blade on this thing. Um, it tapers off on both sides down a spine, and as you can see, there is a spine down the center of this. Now, not all spears are like this, but most of them are in this particular vein. You can also see this is a very chunky head on this whole uh, setup here. And Honestly, I mean, you could technically take this off and use it as a knife, but that'd be a terrible idea because it's really not big enough for that. And you'd have to hold it here and it'd be awkward. Other ones are much better for that. This is not one of them. But other key factors here is this is, again, much thicker. It's much more durable than a knife on a stick. And it has wings. Now that is, of course, as you all know about spears, not a guarantee. You are not guaranteed to have wings on spears. Not all of them had them, not all of them needed them. If you get something like a boar spear, boar spears have very, very large wings because you're trying to stop a charging boar and you want it to catch. This one just kind of seems like these are here more for when you thrust into a target. It doesn't go all the way through and then you have to try to wrestle this out. Or if you were to stab and... Forgive my crappy shield here stab into a shield, it'll, you know, get stuck. Now, I personally view this as a bit of a design flaw because as you can see here, this will go in like this and then go like that and it's going to kind of get itself stuck anyway unless you bring it out exactly the way you put it in and good luck with that. But that is neither here nor there. This is how they designed it and it probably is fairly easy to pull out of something, at least something fleshy. Now, why would you use a spear in a post-apocalyptic scenario? Particularly, why would you make one? This is not me going into my kitchen and taking a shuffle handle and, again, as I've already done, I use a shuffle handle, I use a dowel, but taking and making a knife spear. That is an improvised weapon that pretty much anyone could make so long as you have a jigsaw or a bandsaw of some description. Hell, a handsaw would work if you had enough time. Some duct tape and a knife. Anyone could make what I did seeing as you have, if you have enough time or the proper tools to do so. It's very simplistic. I mean, honestly, you could probably do it with a steak knife if you were dedicated enough. I wouldn't advise it, but you theoretically could. But this is manufactured specifically to be this. Why would you do that in an apocalyptic scenario? First thought of, you can't make guns. I, I mean, it, it sounds really simple, but you couldn't manufacture a gun, because manufacturing guns is actually kind of hard. Guns are not simple. I mean, you can make simple guns. Um, now, because YouTube is YouTube, I'm not going to go into grave detail on this, because uh, the descriptions of how in-depth I can go into when talking about a firearm is murky, if I'm being polite about it. So I'm just going to go off on some very surface-level stuff, and you can all figure out what I'm talking about here, because I trust that you're all smart. So I'll try to give you enough detail, and if you're curious, the rest of the internet's there. Poke around a bit as you want. So the simplest gun you could make is called a zip gun. And I'm not going to really... I don't, it's called a gun because a bullet comes out the end of it, but really it's a pipe that you put a round into that the round won't slip out. Typically a rimmed-fired cartridge. So it can catch on the barrel. And then you... Well, barrel. And then you'll 
hit the end of it to detonate it. This is a gun. In, in, in quote. I can't put big enough quotes on this. I mean, you could theoretically use like a shotgun shell inside of a barrel, inside of a tube, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you would most likely, these are typically used with pistol caliber rounds because the recoil isn't that bad, but then you have a single like, I don't know, 45 magnum round or 44 magnum rimfire that you have to slam into something. I mean, you could, here, let's pretend this is a thing and then do this, but that's awful. Truly awful is the words I would use to describe this. Now, you can get a little fancier. You can go and make a handgun. And I'm talking the old school one, like the Chinese version, where it would be a pole like this and pretend that this is a large tube. And then I have a buddy who's got a stick and I hold it like this. And then they light it and it goes bang. This is slightly better, but the reload time is terrible. The aiming is non-existent and it just kind of sucks because the range is, I mean, that's, you can kind of, the, the aim is like not much better than that tree line. I mean, I'm sure you can hit things farther than that tree line, but honestly, I don't think your odds are very good. And then we get to actual guns, which would be something like a matchlock. Now, a simplistic matchlock is actually really simple to make because it is honestly just a tube that has an end on it. It's a fully it's a tube, hollowed it all the way out, has a small hole on the side of it, where when the match comes down and hits the pan, uh, it doesn't actually hit the pan, that's a snap and it's not necessarily a matchlock. But the match will come down, hit the pile of powder, and ignite into it, and then detonate it. That's kind of simple to make because all it is is a lever that when you depress will bring the head down. And that's workable, but now you have a matchlock. Now, obviously, you can come up with better stuff once you've... When, if you've got that down, you can probably figure out a flintlock and make a flintlock mechanism. Um, now, of course, we all know that these things are already capable, so you can kind of get fancy and start doing some more creative stuff than that. But if you are in a place where people just simply don't know guns, they don't understand guns, they don't know what the proper ratios to make black powder are. I happen to know what they are, but I'm not going to say them because, again, it's YouTube, so I don't know if I'd get in trouble for that, so I'm not going to do it. But if they don't even know how to make black powder, what are you going to do? You need a propellant of some kind, and if you don't have it, well, the good old pointy stick starting to look pretty nice, especially if you're fighting mutant cannibals. I mean, yeah, you could fight mutant cannibals with a machete or your kitchen knife, or you could take your kitchen knife, go out to your shed, you know, your gardening shed, take the hoe off the handle, and uh, get yourself a spear. And then, if you've been doing that for a little bit and get somewhere with someone who has some sort of, you know, forging knowledge, not even really all that in depth, I mean, we're just talking somebody who has a decent uh, functional knowledge of metallurgy and metalworking, can make one of these. That was the whole point of why everyone used them for so long. They're simple to make and simple to use. And then there's another nice advantage here. Now, obviously, there is a lot of debate as to whether it was held this way or like this. And frankly, I'm thinking it's the situation you're in. I mean, if I'm in a formation, something like this is definitely easy, because I can do this. I can just rest this on here. And please forgive my very crappy shield. This is literally just a visual representation of a shield. It's not meant to actually be a real shield. Though I am curious how well this stops stuff. I might do a destructive test on it one day, just out of curiosity. But you can rest it like this and then just do this. It's pretty relaxing, actually. Now this one is, of course, giving you some pretty... Pretty nice reach. But of course, I have to worry about smacking people behind me. But if there is no one behind me, well, personal choice on your part. And the spear gives you an awful lot of reach that a sword or an axe or a mace won't. Now, clubs and things of that nature are also exceedingly simplistic to make. And that probably would be your first weapon. You'd probably grab the knife or whatever, keep that on you as a close quarters thing and then probably go get a nice size tree branch and 
bludgeon things with that and hope to God it doesn't break, or wrap it in duct tape to try to reinforce it a little bit. There's a tighter test I should do. But when it comes down to it, once you get past that stage, having someone make you this if you just can't actually have access to a firearm, because maybe they just won't let you because you don't know what you're doing and they're going, dude, we've only got a hundred rounds for our nine millimeters and you don't know how to use a nine millimeter, so you don't get one. Here you go, you can have a spear. Because this is actually still useful. If you're going through, well, let's go post-apocalyptic scenario, you're going through a suburb or something. Well, I don't need to shoot very, you're not, you're not engaging in a very long distance. I mean, my house is only 10 feet behind the camera here, well, my porch is. And the tree line here is too far away. So while this is pistol range, if I'm not engaging someone who has a ranged weapon, if I'm fighting, say, feral dogs or something of that nature, I can keep things away from the rest of the group. And we may not have to actually properly engage anything at all. Let's, let's just say it's a, a, you know, a crazy mutant comes out and they're in an animalistic state. If they're in an animalistic state, they shouldn't act as the deranged nutcases that we generally see where they mindlessly hurl themselves at the heroes to rack up the body count. They should act cautiously, like animals. They would probably observe for a while and then attempt to ambush. And then if I happen to get the spear around and bring it in front of them, they might stop and back up because if they're not actually armed, again, let's just, I'll just use ghouls from Fallout. They're an excellent example here. I know they look like zombies, but I'm not talking about zombies. I'm talking about feral mutants here. Well, if they don't have proper weapons, or even if they do, they might not have spears. They might have clubs or, you know, just knives in their hands or a pitchfork. I mean, a pitchfork kind of works as a spear, but this is uh, it's a little longer than your average pitchfork. So you'll have the reach advantage. I mean, you're going to have to really stretch that, but you'll have the reach advantage, and you can kind of ward them away while the rest of your group does whatever they need to do, and you can then move on. This lets you threaten properly. That's a lot like the bill, honestly. It gives you a lot of reach. So things with reach are great. Shocking statement, I know. It's a galaxy brain thought. Things that let you stay farther away from the enemy are a good thing. It's almost like humanity's been doing that forever. It's why we kept putting pointy objects on sticks until we realized that we can just go back to accelerating rocks at high velocity and... That works really well. It's almost like that's just what we do forever, is just trying to make rocks go faster. Doesn't matter, it all works out in the end. So if you don't have a rock accelerator of some description, and I'll probably be covering various forms of those, the spear is not a bad choice. And if you actually are at a point where you can manufacture weapons, it's kind of hard to go wrong with something that was good for such a long time and has so many variants I mean, again, this is an anti-person spear. If you're primarily fighting large mutated animals, well, okay. Make the blade a little longer, make the blade a little wider so it causes more bleeding, and, uh, I don't know. About uh, four inches onto either wing. I might make it a little longer if I'm engaging wild animals, because this is, you can get a proper view here. Um, I'm six foot, this is, the wings are about level with my head. So, six and a half ish. I'd probably add another eight, 10 inches out of this thing so that I can really get a nice. So, I'm not uncomfortably close when things are doing this. I might actually go even longer than that, almost go with a small pike. Maybe make the sucker almost 10 feet long. Now, of course, you get to that point, you're going to start running into hitting things when you're trying to maneuver. So, there's a. There's a cutoff point you got to go with, and especially if you go with one that long, you lose the ability to use a shield, but that's fine. Because if you're doing that, you're using it for a very specific reason. The other advantage is I can throw this. That is another nice advantage to a short one. You can throw this, and if you have a secondary weapon, such as a machete or an axe or a club, well, you can use that, and especially it works nice if you have a shield. So, in short, spears are great. Spears will pretty much always be great, at least as some sort of long-term secondary, so long as you're not fighting people with firearms or vast quantities of ranged weaponry. And in an apocalyptic setting, I'm a little sad that I don't see more people having made actual spears, and instead we keep seeing the improvised ones. Which makes sense, 
if it's immediately afterwards, not if it's 20 years afterwards. They would be making their own at that point. So get on it, movie makers. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed my ramblingness about spears. As you know, I don't script these. I'm just kind of talking here. And I hope you all enjoy me just sort of talking. Um, with that said, I will hopefully get some fancier ones and not just talk about something we all already know and sort of agree on here, that spears are neat. Spears are underappreciated. We don't want to oversell them, obviously, but that we love these things. And hopefully I'll get into the weirder stuff. Uh, I might do the knife spear video later on this week. It'll still get released next weekend, but I'm hoping to record it soon. And maybe I'll get to some weird esoteric stuff. I might make up a few weapons myself and do some experimentation. Um, hopefully I'll get some cutting tests in with some things. I might just do a, a three-weapon roundup in one video, just do various tests with all three of them. I don't know. You guys tell me what you want me to do. If you want one cutting test for one weapon, or you want me to kind of just compile, like, three tests together... It might just depend entirely on how long they are. If they're short, I'll probably put them all together. If they're longer, I'll split them up. But with that being said, remember, please put suggestions down below. Put the suggestion of your favorite post-apocalyptic movie so I can go plummet for ideas and other neat stuff. Tell me things you want me to talk about. Even if it is just me sitting here talking, like you want me to talk about the fat man from Fallout or something. I don't know. I can't test that. I don't have a miniature nuclear device. And even if I did, I wouldn't be using it and putting it on YouTube. Let's be honest. So with that being said, stay safe everybody and